Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, your desks should be cleared right now. We're going to do a quick number talk. This number talk's a little different than the ones we've done. Um, as you know from what we're doing, starting multiplication, we're going to multiply whole numbers and decimals. I'm going to tell you right now, multiplying with decimals, people are like, what? And I'm like, well... And we can multiply. If you can read a multiplication chart, multiplication is easy. But what we're going to do today is we're going to do some estimation and talking about how you know where to put the decimal. And we're going to see if we can come up with some sort of idea. So what I'm going to do is... is I am putting a problem and, so I have two factors, I have a product, but that product has to have a decimal point in it. So I'm going to let you look at it for just a moment using some Brainiac skills. Make sure you're paying attention up here. Using some Brainiac skills to see if you can use some common sense to figure out where you would place the decimal. Oh wait, I need to get my Team Shake app because I paid 99 cents. I want to make sure I get my money's worth. All right, so Team Shake. So those are the right numbers in the product. We just have to figure out what the where the decimal point goes. And Gus, you're going to tell me where you think the decimal point goes and why you think it goes where you said you think it goes. It's hard? Goes in front of the 8. Why do you think it goes in front of the 8? Because 4 times 2 is 8. Because 4 times 2 is 8. Anybody have any other observations? Good. Chloe, where do you think it goes? In front of the 8. Who else thinks it goes in front of the 8? So Chloe, you don't think it goes in front of the 8 now? Okay, so you have your hand up. Alright, Colin, you said it goes in front of the 8? Can you tell me why? Oh, because like he said, four, four times two is eight, and then the two, two times three is um, six, and then and then you okay, so you, and, yeah. just going through the standard algorithm. LSA, you didn't have your hand up, did you? No. For going in front of the eight, where do you think it goes? <coughs> in between the one and the seven. And why do you think that? <coughs> you just think that? You don't have a why? Mm -hmm. Doctor? Well, I think those numbers make a whole and another number. So. Okay. Okay. Kinley, do you have a different answer? I think it goes um, in front of the eight. In front of the eight? In front of the eight. Sahana's not here. Josh? Yeah. Where do you think it goes? I think it goes between the seven and the six. Why? Because in, in regular adding decimals, you just drop the decimal down. Okay, that's adding decimals. Okay. 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 So does anybody think... Now we've got three different places where people think the decimal goes. Anybody think it goes in front of the one? Raise your hand. Behind the eight, raise your hand. No? All right. We've learned to round decimals. So if we round three and four tenths to the nearest whole number, what do we get? Three. 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 If we round 
5 and 2 tenths to the nearest whole number, what do we get? 5. five. So what's 3 times 5? 15. 15. So you said 3 and 4 tenths is near 3, right? Yeah. You said 5 and 2 tenths is near 5, correct? Yes. And 3 times 5 gives us a product of 15, correct? Yes. So if I put my decimal point, so my answer should be somewhere around 15, right? Yeah. yeah. Make sense? Yes. It doesn't make sense? All right, we'll look at some more. Okay. So if I put my decimal point behind the 1, is that near 15? No. No. If I put my decimal point behind the 7, is it near 15? Yes. 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 If I put my decimal point behind the 6, near 15? No. 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 Behind the 8? No. 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 Let's look at another one. Event, we're going to try and figure out if we can figure out the rule, the rule for doing this. Because there is a rule. Oh, I just I gave you the answer. You just had to figure out where to put the decimal point. Oh, let's go. So look at this one. Mason, I need you to put that away and just watch up here, please. So look at this one. See, if you have an idea where to put the decimal, so when I call on you, you have an idea and a reason. Natalie, where do you think the decimal point goes? In front of the 8. In front of the 8. Why? Because it lines up with the other decimals. Because it lines up with the other decimals. Okay. Kane, where do you think the decimal point goes? Between the one and the eight. Why? Same answer, because it lines up with the decimals. Andrew. Same answer. Same answer. Ian. I think it goes between the one and the eight, because um, if you rounded it, it would be nine times six, and nine times six is fifty. Okay, if I rounded this, it's nine, and six, and six times nine is? Not 50. 54. 54. 54. Okay. Alright. And it does go between the 1 and the 8. Not because of the reason a couple of you said. And let's look at another one. Let's look at... Now I have this problem. Jaron, can you read what's this factor say? No, the whole factor. Good, two and forty-six hundredths. And Mason, what does this factor say? Nine tenths. Nine tenths. Oh man, I gave you the answer. Kason, how do you say this number without the decimal point? This this product. Two thousand two hundred fourteen. Right. All right. So I. So those, if you paid attention, you saw where I. Put the decimal point. Uh, oh, yeah. Got a uh, sneaking suspicion. Sanaya, where do you think the decimal point goes? Um, in front of the two. In front of the two, which one? Uh, this it's going to go in our product. You do not know. 
Oh, no. Ian, where do you think it's going to go? It's going to go um, in between the two, in between the two and the thousand and one. Okay, so in between the two twos? Mm -hmm. okay. In between the two twos! Why, Ian? Because there is no <coughs> one in the mountain. Oh, okay. And, and, okay, so that would be 90 and... Okay. okay, let me ask you this. Okay? I'm going to ask this as a class. This one is a raise hand volunteer thing. Morgan, we're multiplying 2 and 46 hundredths. Is that less than or greater than 2? Yeah. Greater than. Morgan, we're multiplying that. The second factor is 9 tenths. Is that less than or greater than 1? No less. Less. So if I'm multiplying something by 1, my product is going to say the same as my first factor. If I'm multiplying by more than 1, my product's going to be greater. So if I'm multiplying by less than 1, my product's going to decrease and get smaller. Okay, and Ian is exactly right on where we put the decimal point. Because 2, let's ask, I want to ask my young friend, yes. yeah. Kinley, what is 2 and 46 hundredths round to as a whole number? Closer to 2 or 3? 2. two. No, Chloe. What is 0 and 9 tenths round to? 1. And what is 2 times 1, Chloe? 2. So my answer has to be near 2. So placing the decimal point incorrectly should never happen. Now you may multiply and get a, your factor may be wrong. I mean your product may be wrong. That's an acceptable mistake. But your placing of the decimal point should never be wrong if you use some estimating and some common sense. But there is a rule for how you know where your decimal point goes. Besides your estimating, because we had the answer that the decimal point moves straight down. That was one of one person's theory. Colin, is this product going to have two decimal points? No. Then it can't move straight down. Because when you multiply numbers, you don't line up the decimal points. When you multiply numbers, you don't line up the decimal points. Our rule is we multiply like normal. So I would just multiply this as 246 times 9. And I would get 2,214. Oh. Then my rule says, Mason, the second time I've had to warn you, I want that away so you can pay attention. My rule says, then I count how many numbers are behind the decimal point in the, in the problem. This factor has 2. This factor has 1. That tells me my product needs to have 3 numbers behind the decimal point. So I'm going to give you some notes that you're going to glue in your journal in just a momento after I show you a quick video. But I want to show you this video, and then you'll glue in some notes in your journal. Obviously, when you glue it in, your table of contents will say multiplying decimals. And let's do this today. If you don't have a complete table of contents, I'm probably going to have to mark you for not following directions. 
because every time we put something in there, I remind you, make sure you put your table of contents. That way, when I say open to this, and you'll be like, I don't know where it's at. And I'll say, look in your table of contents. And you say, I didn't write in my table of contents. And I say, listen, Bozo, I told you to write in your table of contents. And you say, please don't call me a Bozo. And I'll say, well, you're a Bozo if you don't follow directions. And then you'll say, I don't want to be a Bozo. And then I'll say, well, follow directions. <laughs> Boom! Shakalaka! Peace out. God bless. Love ya. Do something kind today.